Jeremy S. Cook here, and today I'll be going over the controls for my servo slider assembly. You can see it here is sliding, and then it stops automatically. You can see it here taking footage of my helping hands assembly. It really looks nice scrolling through here just seeing the different angles get changed. Now I've had this before and used this in some other videos, but the problem was my interface was pretty bad. In fact, you can see here hooking it up with uh, alligator clips to make it fo go forward in reverse. Now the shots I got were, were spectacular, but needed a little bit better at method for that. So I took out the DC motor, and instead I put on a modified servo, modified continuous rotation servo motor. Not really a servo anymore, but that's, that's an argument we can have later, I guess. So putting that on there, uh, the servo plate, the adapter, and everything else, it worked out, worked out pretty nicely. So everything went on there well, and after that it was time to do some soldering. In this case, I was kind of making things up as I went along, but I put a capacitor there to even out some of the voltage spikes that we'd see when the, the motor would start up and stop, or just when it start up, really. I'm hooking up a servo connector there so I could, I could take it on and put it on and take it off really easily. So here's the overall drawing. I've got the 9 volt battery, a button to turn it on and off, capacitor, servo itself, potentiometer to, to turn the motor forwards and backwards, and a couple switches to stop it from going too far. Worked out pretty well and fit in my enclosure nicely. So here's me trying out the motor just with a test program. After that worked out well, I put the potentiometer on there. This allowed it to read an analog voltage off of this and and you can see kind of the results there going off a serial signal. That would be correlated with the servo itself and this test here. I could have left it here, but you know, it looked pretty, pretty shoddy and if I'm gonna do it, I might as well just go all the way. So right there, I cut out a piece of scrap wood that I had, so it was one by two. Although dimensionally, I think it was uh, three quarters by one and a half. <laughs> you know how that goes. So the, the battery went in there. I would cut it specifically for that battery. In fact, it was almost a press fit, so I probably could have just left it there. But you'll see, I, I came up with a better solution for it later. To attach it to the side of the rail, I put holes in it for a 632 tap, put some super glue on it to help hold the, the wood in it, then tapped it for a 632 two bolt. This is a pretty good technique, and I've used it before in certain situations, so it's nice to have that in the back of your back your toolbox if you want to use it. So right here I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm putting some shallow holes in there and I'm actually kind of putting magnets in here that'll hold the batteries in. In addition to that I put some magnets or put some slots for magnets that I would use to hold the cover on. It's gonna be a clear piece of polycarbonate. It looks really good so make sure you check out that later. So yeah a little bit of deburring later, a couple of coats of paint and it was looking pretty good. That screw made a nice stand for it so I could make a standoff and stuff. After that, it was time to hook on some more of the controls. This is actually hooking up the controls for the start and stop switches. There's one on either end. Use some heat shrink on there because that's uh, that makes it look nice, makes it not, not short out on each, each other. It takes a little planning, but it looks a lot better than electrical tape. It doesn't come off like that does. a little ironing with a soldering iron and then it was time to go back to the cover back to the case so those magnets would hold the hold the battery securely at least in theory and a little test there showed that it did there's some standoffs I made for some some scrap polycarbonate that I put the button on to turn it on and off little hot glue on that and then a little hot glue on the RG10 Nano that I used. Potentiometer, same thing. I, I discovered hot glue way too late in my making career so I, I'm really making up for it now. It's, it's such a great great material if you don't want to put something a little bit more permanent in there. It's pretty nice. So with that, with that done I turned it on and a little test there. It's working again and actually starting to look pretty good. So some more hot glue there. With that done, I put the magnets on there. 
and a couple more magnets on the back. With that done, I started making the polycarbonate cover. It's going to be evening it out here, just making sure everything's flat. And then I put us a pull in for the potentiometer and then another one for the power switch, the power on off button. Also put some slots in there to make the magnets flush on there, but I don't, didn't actually tape that for whatever reason. This paddle bits made quick work of that. Did quite a bit of measurement before, before cutting that. And even with that done, I was quite pleased to see it actually fit on there. So I put Melrose magnets on there and with the hot glue on there, putting the hot glue in those slots, I was able to just put it in there and let it dry a little bit and it, it lined up perfectly. It's kind of a cool, cool little technique. So there I am using the 632 holes that I put in earlier. Another 632 hole there. Lined up nicely with this Servo City Actobotic slider that I had. Really, really looks great. The, the controls are so much better than I had before. Just the the raw alligator clips, or I actually use the controller too. But that just it's not real portable. You just got to have all this stuff with you. But with that done, you can see it going forwards and backwards. And there's another view of it here. Looks pretty good. There's a little more detail though. All those wires in the bottom had to be had to be neatened up. So a little bit of heat shrink there. A couple zip ties and things, things became a little bit more under control. Also I had to do some soldering for the buttons. This was kind of a, kind of a shoddy job as, as much of my soldering is, but it got the job done. Middle one is a little easier because I could loop it over there. Just a little solder there, it's all done. I also had to put a resistor to the ground from those because for some reason it was floating high. So there it goes at normal speed, stops at the button, and then I can reverse it. All handled with software, really, really cool. So there's another view of that. You can see the control box all nicely packaged in one little unit. This will be really nice for upcoming projects. I just can't wait to use it to make some even better shots of stuff. If you did enjoy it, I hope you'll give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, or even leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you later. Oh, there's one more thing. How about another shot of it actually taking something, actually strolling through? So here you can see this is my, my bit set. It's uh, just passing through. I actually used some post-production to make it rotate as well. But the fact that it's already turning, already changing perspective makes it look really, really cool. Anyway, thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you later. Jeremy S. Cook, signing off.